answer your questions about that. Great. So, um, so that's the reason I'm here. But actually, uh, uh, you know, we don't we don't hear much about Lebanon in the UK. Uh, normally, only bad things. So uh, it's really great to come and meet you all. And the main thing I've uh, two things I've found out so far about Beirut. One, uh, the people are wonderful. And uh, I hope that you will continue that uh, that tradition. Second is uh, it's really nice weather. Uh, I'm back in the UK, so I've I've come here from from England. Uh, I live in a, the second largest city in England. Um, I've been running my coaching and training and consulting business for 16 years, maybe 17 years. And um, back in the UK now, it's winter, it's very cold, and sitting in the, the sunshine today made me uh, made me think about um, well, made me think about the sun and about earth and about what we are all part of in nature. You know, everything that is in the earth, everything that is on the earth, was all created by the sun. All the elements, all the minerals, everything that's around us was here when the earth was created. And there is no more or less of anything than when we started small difference because we launched some rockets and we had some meteors, meteorites landed, but most of everything that we have on Earth doesn't change. We just move it from one place to another. So uh, so if you want to put some, what, what, what do you put in your car? Do you call it petrol or gasoline or fuel? fuel? So you want to put some fuel in your car, where does it come from? And where did it come from before that? So there were trees and plants on the earth. They died. They turned into oil. We took the oil out of the ground. We turned it into fuel. We turned it into plastic to make new mobile phones out of and everything that we see around us. We just move it from one place to another. There is no more of anything. Uh, we're, we're stuck with what we started with. We just get good at moving it from one place to another. So everything on Earth was really created by the sun, and I was really uh, aware of this as I was uh, sitting in the sunshine uh, across the road this morning. So um, if we want something new, we have to create it. If we want a new mobile phone, we want to go and put some fuel in the car, it's not there waiting for us to, to dig it up. We've got to invent it, we've got to create it. We've got to create something that wasn't there before, but we can only create it using the raw materials that we started with. There is no more. <clears throat> so if we want more out of life, and I'm guessing that everybody here tonight, you're here because you want more out of life, or maybe you're working with people and you want to help them get more out of life. Is that true for some of you as coaches maybe? Um, so if we want to get more out of life, it isn't there waiting for us. It isn't there in some shopping mall or in the ground somewhere. We can't dig it up. We've got to create it. And we can only create it using the things that we've already got because we're stuck with what we've got. We can move it around. We can change the shape. We can put it together in different ways, but, but that's what we're creating out of. So if you want more out of life, then what we've got to learn to do is, uh, is how to create more. And actually, we could say we're only going to get more out of life if you're prepared to put more in. And then we get more out. So, what I'm going to share with you this evening is some really simple ways that you can create more in your life and enjoy more and create more for the people around you, maybe the people you're working with or your friends or your family. Uh, would that be useful? So by the time we finish this evening, you will take away some real simple, practical tools that you can, that you can use. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, happy? Good. So the first one is most people don't get what they want out of life <clears throat> for a very simple reason. They don't get what they want because they, they don't know what they want. Yes, very good. Most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. They know what they don't want. They know what they don't like. They know what they like. 
they put up with, they tolerate things on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you ask somebody, what do you really want? It's a very difficult question to answer. So what I'm going to give you is a very simple tool, just four things to check that will help you to really be clear about what you want and to think about it in a way that I guarantee will make it easier for you to get it. And then this is something that you can use with your friends, with your clients, if you're helping them to think about their goals, what they want out of life as well. Would that be good? So, uh, I need somebody to help me with the deck, thank you, with the demonstration. Come on. And what is your name? Firas. Firas, Firas. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take it. Let's take it. Okay, with a flag and everything. It's great. Like we're politicians on TV, isn't it? So, <laughs> tell me about the uh, your election that you've uh, recently. You must be very pleased. And, yeah, it's not me. I know that's what we're used to watching on, on TV. That was loud. Okay, so four very simple things that I'm going to check. And we'll find out, firstly, what he wants, and most importantly, if it's really what he wants. So, here we go. Can you tell me something that you want? Uh, maybe want from life, something that you want more of? Okay. Uh, I'm studying to becoming a certified public accountant. Okay. Okay, so a certified public accountant, yeah. Yes. And what do you want in that? Uh, what I want in that, I want to excel in my job, I work as an auditor. Okay. Okay. So, so he wants to excel in his job and in his career uh, because he works as an auditor. Sound good? Anybody here want to excel in your job and your career? Fantastic. So it's uh, Danny at the back there wants to excel. Good. So, um, so the first thing we've got to check is: is it what he wants? He's not saying I, I, I don't like my job anymore. He's not saying uh, my car's a bit uh, old. He's not saying what he doesn't want. He's telling us what he does want. And that's the first thing. He's telling us something that's positive. When I say positive, I don't mean good. I mean it's that he, what he does want. It exists. So you do want that. You want to excel in your job. Excellent. And be successful and, and so on. Wonderful. Second thing is, is it under his control? Okay, so excelling in your job is it under your control? Uh, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am the master of my ship. You, you are the master of your ship. Excellent. So you are an accountant on a on a ship. Uh, is... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. So it's under his control. That's what he says. So we'll go we'll go with that for now. Third thing we've got to check is is that real. Is it something he can touch? Is it something he can hold? So it's intangible. So if you think about excelling in your job as something that you can see, something you can touch, what would that be? Imagine, the person I want to become. Ah, the person you want to become. Yeah. Great. And that you can see that. I can assess if I'm reaching my goal or not. Okay, sounds very good. So he can imagine the kind of person he wants to become and he can see if he's reaching his goal. Sounds good? And you can imagine how that feels? Really good. Really great. Excellent. So, and what kind of things would you hear when you're excelling in your job, when you're that person that you want to become? Uh, positive comments from the surrounding. Positive comments from the surrounding. Fantastic. So now we're going to check if it's really what he wants. This is very simple. Pay attention, otherwise you, you might miss it. So, if I could give you that now, excelling in your job, becoming the person you want to be, would you take it? Great. Did, did he say yes? He said definitely, and he took it, but he didn't say yes. What does that tell us? He has not. He's not focused. He's not focused. <laughs> He wants to, he's not making an effort, um, he doesn't really believe it. This is interesting because normally we ask somebody, do you want something? And they say definitely and they take it. We think, well, 
that they definitely wanted? They said yes. He didn't say yes. Maybe it's what he wants, but he doesn't really want. Okay, so the clue, the clue was in step number two. Was it under his control, excelling in his job? Is it under his control? No. Because who decides if you're excelling in your job? Do you decide? You just sit there at work and say, hey, I'm doing an amazing, I'm, I'm going to get a pay rise. I'm doing a great job. No. Ah, so what is your criteria in excelling? My knowledge. Your knowledge. Yes. Great. And when you think knowledge about that person, excelling. how you excel? Okay, so you feel like your knowledge is expanding? Yes, it is. Great. So when you think about that future you, yes. how you picture yourself, how you want to become? Someone knowledgeable, not someone rich. Or someone knowledgeable? Yes, yes. When you picture that, you know that right now, that is not you. And that is what stops you from achieving it. Believing that that only exists in the future. No. I am a knowledgeable person. I want to expand my knowledge. Yes. In the, on my way to the future, every day I'm expanding my knowledge. Uh -huh. So, if I could give you the opportunity every day, every hour, to be expanding your knowledge in all kinds of different subjects and knowing, feeling your knowledge expanding, would you take that? It's better, much better. We're not quite there yet. But it's better. That would be a better goal for him to focus on. Thank you. That would be a better goal for him to focus on than excelling in his career. Because his career is not under his control. He can work very hard, but it's up to somebody else to give him a promotion or a job or a pay rise. What do you think will happen if you're putting energy and time into a goal that somebody else decides if you achieved it? It's frustrating. You never get there. You're always waiting for somebody else. Did I, did I do it? Did I make the grade? And somebody else goes, no, try harder. So knowledge, is, is gaining knowledge under your control? Is it? Where are you getting the knowledge from? I'm investing my time. In learning. From learning from? Other people. Yes, yes. So is learning under his control. New knowledge. Is new knowledge under his control? No, because other people have to provide the knowledge for him to learn from. It's not under his control. What is the first step in learning that is absolutely under your control? Decision. The decision to do what? Stand up. The decision to stand up and learn. And where does all learning start? What does all learning start with? Listen. Listening. And before listening starts with? Observing. Come on, what does, what does all knowledge start with? A, a something, a something specific. A, a question. All learning starts with a question. Do you know the question that you're asking? Okay. <laughs> then how can you learn if you don't know what you're asking? I start. I start. Great. So if I could give you an opportunity every day, every hour, every minute to be asking questions, to be exploring, to finding answers, to creating knowledge, would you take it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, we're still not there, are we? It's still not yet. 
What's stopping you from asking questions? I'm a detail oriented person. Ah, rubbish. Okay. You're not detail oriented. People always nag about it. Yeah, you're not detail oriented. The people who. This are... right here is the reason that he doesn't ask questions. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see in front of you here? A foreman? A foreman? A follower? Okay. He looks great, right? I mean, yes? But he looks, are you single? Are you single? Do you have a girlfriend or a wife? No? You're single? He looks great. It's perfect, right? Your tie is just a little. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Come okay. down a little. Yeah. Okay. I was worried about him. Thank you. Now he's perfect. <laughs> uh, he looks. He's perfect. When you're perfect, where do you go? No, someone. No, nobody is perfect. So what stops you asking questions is believing that you have to show people that you're perfect. Because if you think you're perfect and you ask a question, you will think, they'll think I'm stupid, they'll think I don't know if I ask a question. But knowledge, learning starts with questions. What if I could give you a way of asking questions that would mean that by asking the question you would look even smarter, even better, even more like somebody who excels in their career? I could give you that now, would you take it? No. No. Wow. What makes you say no? I want to do it the way I want. You want to do it the way you want to do it. You are not a detailed person. You don't like following procedures. You want to write the procedure. You want to do it your way. If I could give you a way to expand your knowledge so it's selling your, your career your way, asking your questions, creating your knowledge. I haven't even asked him yet and he just said yes. <laughs> Would you take it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we got there. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. This was the, the first one was easy. It was positive. He told us what he wanted. Second one is where almost everybody gets stuck. What he was asking for, what he was focusing his time and his energy on, was not under his control. It depended on other people doing what he wanted them to do. But if we don't tell people what we want them to do, they don't do it. They do what they want to do. So your career becomes not your career, but it becomes the plan that somebody else has for you. Is that what you want? No. It has to be real. It has to be something that he can touch, something that he can see, something he can hear, so that he is absolutely certain what he's looking for, what he's searching for, and he will know when he has achieved it. And when he imagined himself, this is something that we uh, will probably talk about in the advanced coaching masterclass. When he imagined himself as being this future wonderful person, how is that image not real? How is it possible that he can imagine himself in great detail, but it is not real? How do we know that? Because, because he's imagining something else? It's not tangible, it's far away, because he's sitting here. If he is sitting here, then he cannot be in that picture. And he will never see himself. That is never a measure of success. It's something else that he sees that's the clue for excelling in his career. You'll see it maybe when you're older, you'll see it reflected in 
the people who are just qualifying, who you are mentoring, who you're supporting, who you're passing on your knowledge to. That's one of the ways that you will see that you've excelled in your career. And ecological, I talked about the system that we can't, we can't add anything or take anything away from the earth. Not, not really. So it's ecological, it means we keep the balance of the system. We cut down a tree, we plant another tree. We take some oil out of the ground, we turn it into mobile phones and we throw them away. That's not ecological, we know that. But ecological means that when I said, if I give you that now, would you take it? 100% of his mind and body said yes. The first time, 80% 80% said yes, 20% said no, and that fight, that conflict, comes out as, as what we heard. Definitely. And then the second time, the long pause. The third time, no. Now the 80% is no, and that's valuable. So it's very simple. What I'd like you to do is practice something. Is that okay? Yeah? So turn to the person next to you, ask them what they would like, something they would like more in their life or something they would like to achieve. Check that it's positive. They're telling you what they do want. Check that it's under their control, doesn't rely on somebody else. Check that they can see it, they can hear it, they can feel it. Like something like... Uh, like if you said to somebody, can you go and fetch my, uh, my, uh, my mobile phone from the kitchen? And somebody would say to you, your friend might say, what does it look like? And you would say, well, it's this big and it, it's in a black case, it's leather. Uh, now they know what to look for. And it's ecological. So the ecology check is you say, and if I could give you that now, would you take it? And they will either say yes, or anything else is no. And if they say no, go back and check everything again. Normally you'll find not under their control, or they don't have a clear way of identifying it in, in step number three. Is that everybody happy with the instructions? I'll give you uh, 10 minutes. If it's not under your control, then focus on the first step that is under your control. So, for example, gaining knowledge is not under your control if somebody else has to supply it. But asking the question, that's under your control. You don't change the goal, but you focus on the first step. We focus on the first step that we can take. Because every step that we take changes our point of view. Every time we change our point of view, we get new information. Oh, now I'm there. Yes. You said most of the time it's under, it's under your control. But if, if they say no, it's more related to not under your control. Thank you. What's the question that makes you think about being real? Real? Yeah. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What can you touch? I mean, if, if a person, uh, you find him that he's hesitated to 80% uh, no when you ask him a question. Uh, if, I give you, if I give it to, what's the question that it's related to real? Not to under your control. What, what can you see? What can you hear? What can you feel when you've achieved that goal? So, so for him, when he excels in his career, what does he see? What does he hear? What does he feel? Okay. But how, how do you know that the, the thing that he's, he wants to see is not real? That's why he's hesitating. Because he could see something that he will never see in his life. He could see himself. You will never see yourself. You are the only person in the world who will never see yourself. 
you'll see a photograph, you'll see a, in a mirror, but that's not you. You are more than that. And the clue was, he was looking at something that cannot be seen by you, by him. He can never see himself. We can see him. A boss could see you. And so what you were concerned with is how do you look to your boss? Or how do you look to your father? Or something like that. Okay, so I'll give you 10 minutes to practice that. Just ask your person sitting next to you or your friend that you came with for a goal. Check that it's positive. Check that it's under their control. Can they see, hear, feel? Can they touch it? And then do the ecology check and see what happens. I'll give you 10 minutes. Hello everybody in Facebook land. So they're doing an exercise for 10 minutes now. Um, yeah, they're just doing this. It's okay, you don't have to take them. Oh, you can, you can show them. Here you, can, here you can see all the people playing along. There we are. No, it's back to me again. Here we are. Hello. So, uh, so they're doing the exercise in the room here and you can play along at home as well if you want to. So remember, just ask yourself if you're watching alone, think of something that you want. Ask yourself, is it positive? Is it what I do want? Not something that you're trying to avoid, not something that you're trying to have less of, something that you do want. Is it under your control? So is it dependent on anybody else? Is it waiting for anybody else? Uh, is it real? Can you see it? Can you touch it? Can you hear it? And finally, just by yourself, think, if I had this right now, how would I feel? And if you get a good feeling all over, that's great. It's more likely that you'll get an uncomfortable feeling or a feeling of some kind of conflict or uh, a feeling of maybe uneasy. Um, you might think to yourself, hmm, maybe it's not completely good for me maybe it's not exactly what i want and then you can go back and check am i waiting for somebody else is there is there something else i'm depending on uh and just go back and and like they're doing in the room here just go around the circle check again and um and see how it helps you to clarify the goal and how it helps you to focus in the right place so we have about uh Another seven or eight minutes before I, I carry on with the workshop so you can get yourself some tea or coffee or play along at home and I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.
Right, that's time to time to carry on. So, speaking of mobile phones, I always uh, forget to take a, a photo with the audience. Is that okay? Can I take a photo with you? 
Hi, everybody. Say hello. Somebody wave. Give me a wave. Uh, I, we are, we're live on Facebook, so I shouldn't, the people that are watching on Facebook, I don't want them to feel left out, so I'll just take a, a selfie with the, <laughs> take a selfie with the people on, hang on. If you're watching on Facebook, you've got to wave. Somebody wave on Facebook. There we go. So, what did you, what did you find if you practiced, if, Manal, if you practiced, if you practiced this with a partner, what did you find? Did anybody, did anybody get a yes first time? Yeah, sometimes you got a yes, yeah. Did anybody see the, the conflict I was talking about? Yeah, you saw the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the simple way, uh, the simple thing to look for, I find, is that when somebody says yes, with less or more energy than it needs. So if they, instead of saying yes, they say, yeah, yeah, low energy. And if I say yes, it's too much energy. You don't do that in a restaurant, do you? You don't do that. When you go into a shop, you want to buy some water in the shop, you go, oh, water, give me water. You don't do that. You just say, can I have some water? And the shopkeeper says, yes, here you are. It's whatever the price is. Oh, talking about price of water. Uh, conflict. Do any of you ever have a problem with time management? Yeah. Oh. Big, big problem with time management. Okay, great. Might, I might ask you to help me demonstrate something. In a, not, ah, ah. <laughs> you, won't miss, you won't miss anything, it's okay. So, uh, time management. Uh, so do any of you find yourselves at work doing something that you wish you were not doing? Maybe somebody asked you to do something and you said yes, when what you really meant to say was no. Yes. Yeah. Or, or sometimes they ask you if you can do something and you say, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm really busy and it's not really my job. And then you, you, you do it anyway. Does that ever happen? You used to be like this. And what do you like, what do you like now? Into, you say yes or no. Okay, let's find out if that's true. Would you come and give me a, <laughs> some help? Nice to meet you. Oh, she's got to get ready first. She's got to be prepared. Nice to meet you. Your name is? Mirna. Mirna. Very nice to meet you from the TV studio on the, uh, in the TV studio up here. But tell me about your new film. Uh, yeah. Your, new, your new movie. Or... With Brad Pitt. Yeah, no. With Brad Pitt, that's it. So, uh, and there's an exercise that goes with this that you can all play along with afterwards. I'll show you how it goes. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to make an unreasonable request. So uh, did you drive here this evening? Do you have a car? Great. So I'm going to make an unreasonable request. And so is it Mirna? Mirna. And what I'm, I'm going to ask it three times. And what we're going to do is compare and see what happens, see if it's true that she says yes or no and she's really clear now. So I'm going to make the same unreasonable request three times and the first time you're going to say yes and we'll see what happens. So for example, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Beirut for a week, so could I borrow your car for a week? Of course not. So the first time you say yes, oh, I have to say you okay. have to say yes. So okay. could I borrow your car for the week? Okay, I'm not, if, if I was at the uh, car rental company here, like Avis and Hertz, and, yeah, if she was on the Avis counter, I wouldn't feel confident that I was getting a car. Um, I'm lying, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the word, so that forcing her to answer yes created some conflict. And we saw that conflict, she looked down, she looked away, she didn't make eye contact with me. 
She, she said yes, but she didn't like it. And that's what some of you do at work, isn't it? You say yes, we don't like it. And what happens to that conflict? Where does it go? Inside. It goes inside you, it becomes stress. And this time I want you to say no. Okay? Uh, so, Mirna, can I borrow your car for the week? Ooh, did you see what she just did? She did it again. She looked away. She didn't look me in the eye. She wasn't happy with that either. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I'll probably take care of the car. It's, it's, a, it's okay. You don't, you don't trust me. You don't trust strangers. We, you, we've just met. I'm not a stranger. But we met like five minutes ago. We know each other. We're old friends now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now she's still, now she's trying to convince me to borrow it. <laughs> still doesn't mean it. Um, <clears throat> so the point is, forcing her to answer no created just as much conflict. She didn't like that either. So when you're at work and somebody asks you to do something, or a friend asks you to do something at the weekend, and you say no, you don't like it because it makes you feel like a bad person. It makes you feel like you're, you're rejecting somebody, you're turning somebody down. They won't like you. I won't like you if you don't lend me your car. Oh, she says she doesn't care, but I think she does. So let's try a different. Let's try a different. Let's give her a way out. Because what happens is, when we're, uh, when, we're, when, we're, when we're negotiating with our time, see, she's very careful with her car. She doesn't like to lend her car to strangers, but she'll give her time away for nothing. You'll all give your time away. See, every day at midnight, you are given another 24 hours, and it doesn't matter what you do. You're given 24 hours. You can use it however you want, and that will be finished at midnight again and then you'll get another 24 hours you don't have to earn it you don't have to buy it it's free and because it's free you give it away to anybody who asks can i have some of your time yes take it all i don't need it so when you were negotiating with time what happens is we don't value our own time and, we, and what happens is we get forced into a position of conflict where we think the only two answers we can give are either yes or no. We don't like that. So when we're forced into this position of conflict where we think the only two answers are yes or no, we're stuck. That conflict stays inside. It creates stress. And we probably end up doing it anyway because otherwise we feel bad, we make the person feel bad, we let them down, something like that. So, I'm going to give uh, men a, a different type of answer. Because Has anybody ever done negotiation training? And, and what are you taught to do in negotiation training? You're taught to create more options, aren't you? You're taught to make the, make the deal bigger, right? So let's make the deal bigger. This time, I'm going to ask, make an unreasonable request, and I want you to say yes, if, and then I want you to think of a condition for me. Okay? So, Mirna, can I borrow your car for the week? Uh, yes, of course. You were able not to make any accident? Uh, yes, if, I, if I'm able to not make any accident. Well, of course. I mean, I, I look like a safe driver. What, what do Avis do? Do Avis say, you look safe? Yes, you can have a car. What do Avis do? Make you sign a contract. They have to give you a credit card. They have to give some security, right? So they don't care. Crash the car if you want, but they don't lose any money. So think of a condition that would make you feel really safe, like it was a fair exchange a fair deal 
Yeah, like a, like a fair agreement, yeah. So, Mena, can I borrow your car for the week? Mm, yeah, you can buy it. Uh, you can borrow it. Uh, if you were able to borrow me your home. Ah, yes. If I lend her my home. Oh, okay. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, would you take good care of her? Yeah. I like oh, well, she looks okay. Well, she looks confident, so I'll give her my keys to my home. So, do you see what happened? As soon as she realized this is not about her giving to me, this is an exchange. We can only negotiate something that has value. So, when you give your time away, it's because, yeah. You get something equal back in return. So, wonderful. Thank you very much, Mina. Thank, Thank you for your help. <laughs> All right, that. So here's what I'd like to practice. I want you to turn to the person next to you again. Make an unreasonable request that's related to time. An unreasonable request like, can you do some work for me? Or can you finish this project for me? Uh, or could you spend, or could you drive me to the, uh, you know, to the next city, or drive me to the airport, or something like this? But make it an unreasonable request, something that is not easy for them. And I want them first of all to say yes, and I want them to feel the conflict that that creates, and I want you to see the conflict that's created by saying yes. Okay. And then I want you to make the same request again, and this time I want them to say no. And again, I want them to feel the conflict that that creates. And I want them to see, I want you to see the conflict that it creates in them. So with Myrna, she came up saying, oh no, I've solved this problem, I'm very good, I can just say yes or no. And she can say yes or no, but it creates stress. And when we put stress into the system, where does it go? Go somewhere else. So you go home and have some chocolate or maybe some wine or do something. We, we call it self-medicating. So when we don't release that stress, you maybe you go to the gym or you go for a long walk or you have to do something to release that stress. That's not helpful. So you make the unreasonable request. They say yes. Notice what happens. Second time, they make the unreasonable request, uh, you make the unreasonable request, they say no. Notice what happens. Third time, yes, if, and they come back to you with a condition. Notice how it feels to say yes, if, to make the condition. Notice what goes on in your mind when you hear the price for what you're asking. Everybody clear? Great. I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. It won't take you long. Hello, Facebook friends. Uh, so they're doing the experiment now. They're going to come up with an unreasonable request. They're going to say yes. Another unreasonable request, say no. Another unreasonable request, same one three times. They'll say yes if you give me something of equal value or you do something for me in return. Uh, and a lady in the audience has just said, well, why would I do this at work? Well, because otherwise you get stuck in between yes and no. You risk saying no, and then you think it might harm your career, 
maybe it looks like you're not helpful or it looks like you're not working hard or you're not, uh, you're not being a team player, something like that. Uh, and if you say yes, you compromise yourself. And what most people will do, because we are social animals, we, we depend on relationships, what most people will do is compromise themselves. That creates stress. They'll go home and they'll release that stress in a way that might not be healthy for them. And that drink or smoke or eat chocolate. They might go for a walk, they might go to the gym and get some exercise. That might be more useful, but why would you spend two hours in the gym when you can just avoid creating the stress in the first place? That would be the best option overall, I think. So they're having a play with that now. And if you're watching with a friend, you can play along at home too. Oh, 
Okay, let's carry on. Okay, so if you if you try the experiment, what happens? Did it, did you feel the conflict from saying yes or even though this is a even though this isn't real work environment, this isn't you know we you, you're coming up with a request which is invented, it's imagined, it's not real, and still the conflict is so feels real. And then when you said yes, if. What changed? More, more, felt better, more comfortable, more confident? You, you put your own rules. You, you feel empowered, you can put what's in it for you. Yeah, so it seems impolite, and this is everywhere in the world. This is in the UK, this is in South America. I have, I have clients all over the world that have the same problem. And what we do is we make the social relationship more important than our own interests. To the extent that, at five, what time do you normally finish work here in the daytime? Five. So five o'clock, everyone else goes home happy. You're still there doing the work that you should have done in the day when you were doing things for other people. That's not fair. It isn't fair. It's not an equal exchange. They're taking and giving nothing back. Or you are happy to give your time away because it has no value. As soon as you say yes, if, you're saying, I'm very happy to help you. Here's the price. You can go into the uh, Mercedes garage in uh, Beirut. You can say, I'd like a new Mercedes sports car, please. They say, yes, you could definitely have one. Here's the price. Oh, I thought it was free. So we know we are, we're, we're, we know we are born negotiators. We know things come at a price. But when it's our time, we're happy to give it away. So I'll give you some practical examples at work. Somebody says to you, can you do this report for me? Can you finish it by five o'clock? Instead of being caught in between yes and no in that conflict, you say yes, if. Yes, if I'm not tired. What about yes, if. Yes, if it only takes me 10 minutes. What about yes, if. If you pay me Yes. Or you owe me a favor. I will write it down so you know that you owe me a favor. What if we said, yes, if you give me all the information that I need by two o'clock? What you're getting for yourself is two things. First, you get the information you need, so you save your time because you're not running around looking for it. So it saves your time. And what you've done is you've said there is a price. And from a psychological point of view, it doesn't matter what price you put on it. Because we don't understand numbers. We don't understand prices. What we understand is personal value. Is it, do I need it? Is it important to me? There's no price on a bottle of water. The value of a bottle of water is variable, depending on the situation. So, for example, if, you, if somebody says, can you do this report by five o'clock? And you say, yes, if you give me somebody to help me. Yes, if you speak to my boss and get them to take away this other work that I'm doing, so then I'd have time for you. Yes, if you bring me a cup of coffee every half an hour until it's done. The point is you're setting a price. You're saying, if you want my help, then it has a value. You have to give me something in return. And if nothing else, what it gets you is recognition. 
because the person who keeps saying yes, that becomes normal. And the more you say yes, the harder it gets to say what you really want, which is no. And actually, it's not that simple. In any social group, it's not about yes and no. It's not that simple. We have to negotiate. Something takes us a bit longer than we expected. Something is a bit more difficult than we expected. Uh, a very common situation is people try to get a pay rise after they've done something. And they treat a pay rise or a promotion as a reward. They say, I worked really hard all year and I should get a promotion. And any sensible boss will say, why? You were happy to work hard for no more money. Why, why would you get a reward now? If you go to buy a new Mercedes and uh, the guy says, oh, this is the price. And you give them the money and you drive out with a new car, everyone's happy. He can't phone you up in a week's time and say, oh, I charge you the wrong price. Can you come back and give me some, some more money? What would you say? Say no. Yes, you can ask exactly, yes. Yes, you can you can do this when somebody makes a request that where you have to give something to make sure you get something back even if it's just recognition and respect. And you can use it when you're asking somebody to do something. And if you've done negotiation training, one of the most important things you learn is the word that we start every negotiation with is if. If, if I do this for you, will you do something for me? If I give you this, will you give me what I want? how we start every negotiation. The point being that we start a negotiation expecting to make an equal exchange. To make an equal exchange, both are happy. We're both happy. We both got what we wanted. If you are ever in a situation at work or at home where you feel like you're not getting what you want, then that is not a fair exchange. That doesn't mean you ask for a pay rise every time you do some work. Same with parents and children. Can I have some money? Yes, if you clean your room. Will your husband? Will you get fetch me a beer? Yes, if you bring me some flowers. And you do it willingly when you're in a relationship where over time there's an equal exchange. So in a, in a, normally with your husband or wife, uh, you do something for them, you don't get a, a payback straight away. They do something for you tomorrow. You help them with something. They help you with something. We feel like we're helping each other. We're making the deal bigger. We're negotiating. This is at work when what happens at work is People get used to hearing you say yes, and they get so used to it, they stop asking. Because it's normal. You're happy to do it. Why would they ask? Why would they think about what's good for you? You're happy to give them your time, your hard work. Is it fair? And it isn't fair for them either. Because now they go around thinking that other people come for free. So every time you say yes when you mean no, you're not only devaluing yourself, you're devaluing everyone else. And when you say yes if, you're not asking for a lot, you're not asking for a pay rise, <coughs> you're not asking for a, a new desk by the window or something like this, you're just asking for fair and equal exchange of your valuable time. Make sense? Excellent. So, talking about our valuable time, how are we doing for time? It's seven o'clock, isn't it? So, I know we started a little late, didn't we? So we're due to finish at 7.30. We, yeah, we, so what, what do we do? Do we finish at, do we finish at the time we decide, we advertise, 7.30? Or because we started late, do we end late? What do you think? 
Second one, you get more. All right, I have no more information for you, but we can stay here as long as you like. Okay. All right, third tip then. Third practical tip that's going to help you to get more out of life, to create more in life. Uh, do any of you ever avoid something that you don't really want to do? But you have to do it. So eventually you do it anyway, and all that you've done is waste a lot of time thinking about it. So we call this procrastinating. Anybody procrastinate? Why are you slapping this poor lady when punishment? Procrastinate tomorrow. Yeah, procrastinate later. Yeah. So uh, if you procrastinate, if you put things off, here's a little tip for you. Uh, the reason. Anybody know why you do that? No. No. This is why you came. Fear. Why? Why do you say that? You don't like to do it. So you imagine it will take time, you imagine it will be difficult. When you do it, you think, why didn't I just do it in the first place? It would have been easier. Okay. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of the results. So all, so we, lack of skills. So we think there's all these reasons why we procrastinate. There's only one reason why we procrastinate. Fear. Fear of what? Good question. So first, how do we know when we're procrastinating? How do we even know when we're doing it? When we postpone things? The problem with procrastinating is... Excuses, yep. So the problem with procrastinating, it's like tidying the house. We don't know what we do that makes it messy. It just seems to get that way by itself. Yeah, we've, we've decided to put something down. We decided not to take our shoes off. We don't think about that. We forget those things. And then we think, why is this house so untidy? Who's going around leaving their shoes on? Who's making a mess? Oh, it was me. <laughs> uh, hmm. Okay. So, uh, the first thing we've got to do is catch yourself. So... Here's my tip for catching yourself. If in a day you come back to the same task twice, you're avoiding it. So I do this. I'll, I'll, I need to send to me an email. And I think oh, it's a long conversation or it's a complicated thing or ah, maybe they won't like what I've got to say in the email. So I open up the email and I start to type dear person and then i think i'll just get i'll just get myself a cup of tea and i'll oh what's on facebook uh, yes, put the tv on for a bit. Mm, have a cake and then lunchtime i'm doing something else and i close facebook and there's the email still there i think oh I forgot to send that email. So, oh dear, uh, need another cup of tea. Uh -uh. Oh, what's on Facebook? Oh, there's a video on YouTube of a cat. I'll watch that. And then it comes to five o'clock, and I, oh, there's that email. I forgot to send it. Oh, well, they've gone home now. I'll do it tomorrow. So the very first time you realize that you started something and didn't finish it, you avoided something. And what you avoided was fear. Fear, it's not like being scared of, I don't know, spiders or snakes. It's not like being on a roller coaster or watching a scary movie. It's not like that. Fear is so powerful that you will almost never feel it directly. And when you feel fear, it's like, uh, it's like it has a, a field, like a force field. It's so strong, 
you will not get anywhere near it. And it will just give you a little nudge just here. Just a little nudge. And that's enough to think, oh, uh, I, what was I just doing? Oh, I was making a, ah, oh, tea, that's what I need. Oh, what's on Facebook? <clears throat> so the fear is so strong that we only ever feel it as the most quiet, gentle little nudge. And it's just enough to push us in a different direction. So what you've got to get really good at doing is noticing what's going on around you. The second time you come back and do the same thing in a day, the email that you didn't send, the letter that you didn't read, the phone call you didn't make, what other things do you put off? The, a lot of work, the work I've got to do. What else? The decision I've got to make, that's a great one. The, the goal, a goal that I'm working on. Talking to my boss. The studying I need to do. Uh, oh, it's too late. I'll do it tomorrow. The, go to the dentist. Excellent. Well, that's an obvious one where we... Well, I'm not afraid of the dentist. It's not a problem. I'm not afraid of the dentist. Look at, I mean, do I look like the kind of person who's a... So what happens is, as soon as we think about the task, what comes into our mind is, like we saw with the, the gold, the reality. How we think of it, how we imagine it. And that picture that comes into our minds isn't a good one. So we speak to our, we put off a conversation with the boss, when you think about speaking to your boss, what comes into your mind? Uh, and she did this, she went, his mood, what about his mood? He's moody. But you don't understand him, so you're not afraid of his mood, you're afraid that it's unpredictable and it might be negative, so it makes you feel bad. So that's what happens. Uh, so what's your name? Safa. Safa. So when Safa thinks about how she's got to have a conversation with her boss, she thinks his mood is unpredictable, he's very moody, I don't know if he's in a good mood or a bad mood, and therefore uh, I might get into trouble, he might be really horrible to me, I'll feel bad, I don't like it. Because that, that bad feeling is, is fear. Fear that you've done something wrong, fear that you're in trouble, fear that you'll be shouted at, fear that just just being disapproved of, just being rejected, it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, oh, I'll give you a, would you like a really simple practical tip? Okay, so do any of you have the same problem? That you have a boss, unpredictable, and you kind of rehearse in your mind, you think, right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to say this, Here's my proposal, here's my plan, here's my idea. And sometimes your boss will just say no because they're in a bad mood. And you think, oh, I've wasted all that, I've wasted my good idea. Would you like a really simple tip? This is so crazy, it's so ridiculously simple, you'll laugh. Whenever you go in to see your boss, go in with two ideas. And depending on which mood they're in, I told you it was simple. If you want to get really sneaky, go in with two ideas. One is something that you want, and something that is something, uh, one is something that you want your boss to disagree with. <laughs> so when you go in to see your boss, and your boss says, oh hi, what can I do for you today? You think, okay, I'll give him the idea I want. And if you go into you see your boss, you what do you want? You know that person I sit next to in the office? I really want to sit next to them a lot. I really like them. Well, I'm not having you sit next to them. I'm going to move you to an office. With, I'm going to move you to your own office with a desk by the window. Well, okay, you're the boss. You know, so you go in with two things. Better still, go in with one of these. This is, I have found in my working life, by far, the most powerful tool in business to help you to get what you want. How many of you work in an office 
like an office building, you move around the office. If you have one of these in your hand, you can walk around the office for an entire day doing nothing. Nobody will ask you what you're doing. This is the most powerful tool in business. It doesn't even have anything on it. And nobody will challenge you. So, when you avoid something that you don't really want to do, if it's, some, if it's like a boss and they're unpredictable, go prepared. Don't always plan for it being good or bad. Go prepared to have the option available. But when it's something that you're doing by yourself, making a decision or booking a, an appointment with the dentist or uh, some report or an email, a phone call. How many of you put off making phone calls? When it's the second time in a day that you've started the same task, <clears throat> stop and ask yourself a question. That question is, very simple, what am I avoiding? You can also ask yourself this question. What do I think is going to happen? What do I think is going to happen? So, for example, if you make an appointment with a dentist or if you go to the dentist, what do you think is going to happen? Pain. Pain. And you're probably right. Uh, what do you think will happen if you make a decision? You'll have to face responsibility. And you'll have less time. Exactly. Commitment. Mm. Yeah, avoiding commitment. So think, what do I think is going to happen? So if we take the example of a decision, uh, if I make a decision, it will take up time. It's something I have to make a commitment to. Now that you've put that into words, how likely is that, really? How much do you think, how realistic is that? Okay. So what do you think is going to happen, really? It'll be done. And how do you feel about what you're deciding about now? If you have to decide now, what, how do you feel? You feel good. Okay. So it's very, very simple. When you, the clue is, in, is always outside you. The clue is, I've looked at my computer screen, I can see an email that I started writing four hours ago. That's the clue. I can look at my list of things to do today. I can see there's a phone call that I haven't made. Again, that's the clue. I can see something on my desk that I had to talk to my boss about, and I didn't talk to them. That's the clue. And the question is, what do I think is going to happen? Is that really going to happen? And if you want, you can ask yourself, what do I want to happen? And what will happen is you'll focus on the reality of the fear. So, speak to your boss, what do you think is going to happen? It'll be moody. Be realistic, what do you think is really going to happen? You, you'll be rejected. You'll be rejected. Okay, well, so what do you really want? Yeah, what do you want instead of being rejected? I want to do a course. Ah, you want to do a course. Great. 
and you need your boss to give approval. Great. Okay. So if you put yourself in your boss's position, imagine how your boss feels. Is your boss a, a male or a female? Male. So imagine how your boss feels that he isn't supporting your development because he doesn't know what you want. Like we said earlier about goals, most people don't know what they want. Then when people do know what they want, they don't tell anybody else, so they can't get any help. Imagine how your boss feels that you are denying him the opportunity to help you. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. So, what, sorry, what's your name? Sa Safa. So, what Safa is doing, she's saying, ah, oh, maybe it's related to other things, and, you know, if I go and speak to my boss, and it'll be moody and unpredictable, and I want to do a course, and maybe he'll say no. What's she doing? She's blaming her boss for her own fear. And this is the really interesting and uh, worrying thing with fear. We will blame it onto other people because it is so powerful that we never feel it. We feel the little nudge that sends us off in the wrong direction. So, if we want to overcome that fear, what we've got to do is recognize that it's not your boss's behavior that's scaring you. The worst thing, what's worse than him saying no, is if he said yes. Because then, if he says yes, I'll approve you doing this course, what happens? You'll do it, and then... What's the downside of that? I told you it's related to, to other things in that world. Uh -huh. So maybe it's not the okay. uh, way I'm thinking of it. Okay. So in the way that you're thinking of it. So I think what you're doing is it's very hard to admit but that there's something. Maybe you'll do it alone. Yeah. yeah. Ah. See, if doing it at her low, uh, so, so she just said, uh, maybe I'll do it alone. Maybe I don't need my boss's approval. That was always an option. But it was more convenient to say, my boss is stopping me. It's his fault that I'm not doing it. Now she's saying, maybe I'll just do it by myself. That's very different. And that comes from acknowledging that the fear is in here. It's not out there. It's not the audience that scares me. It's not my boss that scares me. Not the spider that scares me, it's me. I want to take responsibility for that. And remember, the first clue is outside. Because what's outside shows us what we've been doing, shows us our behavior. The clue tells us how we're thinking, that we're avoiding something. That makes us ask the question, what do I think is going to happen? And how realistic is that? And what do I really want? And now what we've got is a very different bit of information. You can do it by yourself. You don't need your boss to say yes or no. That's interesting. So what was really stopping you? Be honest, what was really stopping you from doing it? From doing the course. Finance was really stopping you. So how is that an option for you to do it yourself? Oh. I was a little bit nervous there. There was something a little bit of... Because spending the money on it means you, you don't spend the money on something else. It's a compromise. So you have to give up something. Excellent. Uh, so this, this is the real answer that we get to with fear and avoidance. Remember, we're part of a, a system. That system is in balance. We can't add anything. We can't take anything away. If you want something in your life, you've got to let go of something else. If you want to go do the course, you've got to let go of something. It's money. That's a compromise. 
You've got to let go of a story that you've been telling yourself that's been stopping you from doing it. So the hardest thing with procrastination and the things we're avoiding is, what do I let go of? So for you, it's letting go of that image of perfection. It feels scary to let go of that. It's what I want. I can't let go of that. So to become what we want, to have what we want out of life, we've got to be prepared to let go of something. That doesn't mean we've got to be prepared to let go of some dreams or hopes or relationships. It means we've got to be prepared to let go of the story that we're telling ourselves that stops us from having what we want because it's a comforting story. My boss won't let me. It's comforting. It's easy. I don't have time. Yeah, the comfort zone. Letting go of the comfort zone. Yeah, and that story is part of that. So actually, in order to in order to have the courage to do all the things that you think about, the first time you think about them, there's something that you have to let go of. A story that you tell yourself. Right then, last thing to show you of the night. Uh, most people, at some point when they are working towards a goal, will get stuck. Have any of you ever felt stuck? Don't know what to do? Don't know what direction to move in? Do you all have one of these? Yeah, all got one? If not, then, uh, then uh, let Nigel know and we'll, we'll get one to you. So this is a tool called the Unsticker. And if you're ever stuck, then the Unsticker will help you. So this is a pocket version. There is also, uh, yeah, grab one. Yeah. There's also a book. And if you have an Android smartphone, there is a free app that you can get from the Google Play Store, a free on sticker app. It has 200 questions in, and it will generate those questions randomly for you. So when you get stuck, what's happening is you, you're stuck within a certain reality, a certain story, and that story doesn't have all the options in it that you need. So straight away we saw, for example, we've seen tonight examples of that story changing. We've seen examples of new options becoming available. But when you feel stuck, it's hard to know what to do. Do have, any of you here work as coaches or trainers, tra uh, something like that? So do you ever feel like you're stuck with a client? You don't know what to do next or what question to ask next. This will help you with that as well. So what you do is, I want you to turn to a person next to you and tell them very, very short headlines. Tell them about a problem that you currently have. A problem where you feel like you've gone around in circles. A problem where you feel like you didn't make uh, the progress you wanted. A problem where you feel frustrated or that things are not under your control or things are not moving as quickly as you want. So they will give you the headlines of a problem. What you will do is ask a random question. If you look at the question and think, oh no, not that one. Not that one, not that, oh, that's a good one. It won't work. So pick a random question, ask them the question. They don't have to answer you. They can either give you an answer or they can just let you know when they're ready for the next question. Keep on asking questions until you observe something change in them. Make sense? So give them the headlines of a problem very quickly. Ask them questions. Uh, they will ask you questions until they see something changes. Won't take many questions and you'll know it when you see it. So I'll give you uh, about seven or eight minutes to do that and then we'll start wrapping up for the evening. Thank you. There we go. So uh, let's pop it on sticker. And in the pocket and stick it as a load of questions. Uh, I'll show you this. Uh, is the book version. So the free app that you can get on the Google Play Store. I'll show you what that looks like as well. 
Oh, got it here somewhere. Here we are. And all that happens is you press the unstick button and it gives you a different question. So in the app there are 200 questions. That's completely free. There's no advertising. Uh, just, just very simple, very easy for you to use. Uh, in the book there are three... 333 questions. Um, so there's questions in the book, you just turn to a random page, pick a random question. And the point is that you keep, oh, sorry, I've got a, I'm just talking to people in Facebook land, just telling them what to do in the exercise. You off? I thought you live or something. Ah, yes, Facebook live, yeah, but it's okay. Do you want to come and say hello to the people on Facebook live? Come and say hello. Hi, no, okay. I'm meeting, no, just now, hi, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I came to meet you and give you a gift, oh, okay. some music. These are music uh, made uh, on tapes, Yes. Uh, the best hits of 80s and 90s. Wow. Yeah, so it's an MP3, so don't be fooled with the, the number of tracks, because each side of the tape is one track. And what, where, where does this come, is this your music? No, 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 I bought these, I, I'm a collector, I bought these, yeah. and there was this disco type called Disco Floyd here, the, uh, when the CD came out in the early 80s, he would buy CDs and make tapes, and sell tapes. Ah, yes. So I collected all the tapes that I still have, and that so I'm a lot, and I put them on CD, the MP3, there's over 35 hours, each CD is... Nice, you are online. Yeah, 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 online. No, 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 we said hi, and... Uh, yeah, we're here, we're on, we're on Facebook Live. Oh, don't worry, no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dan is getting worried that I'm that talking to a crazy guy on Facebook. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, and why are you giving these away? Well, I, it's a habit, it's wrong, uh, old habit. It started actually Sharing when I was uh, losing my tapes back in the early days, uh, some tapes, you know, in the yeah. car. Yeah. When you lose a tape in the car, one of your friends stole it. So I started making uh, <laughs> copies and, well, take this copy, but don't see mine, you know. <laughs> so you're so it's a habit, now I have a duplicator. So you're sharing the, the joy I'm of sharing music. whatever I like to hear with my friends and the nice people I'm meeting. Oh, wow. That's so it's nice meeting you. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your stay. nice. Okay. CDs. <laughs> Thank you. That's Amal, my friend. Oh, that's yes. Amal. Nice. nice to meet you too. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. You have to, you have to leave now. Yeah, we gotta go. Yeah. Uh, yes. More CDs. More CDs. More CDs. Uh, Doctor Whale, Whale uh, Arif Abu Hamza, PhD, social psychologist, Gestalt, ah, oh, Gestalt therapist. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so really. I will. Thank you very nice much. You. Great to meet you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that nice? It's a free CD. We've got music and uh, gestalt hypnotherapy from a consciousness engineer, speaker, motivator, coach. There we go. So uh, you get the on sticker, get the app, get the book, get the pocket version. Let me know if you want one of those. Uh, oh, there's a free version on the website as well, theunsticker.com. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that in a comment. Theunsticker.com. There we go. Hopefully I've just sent that in a comment. Uh, so it will generate one random questions. You ask the questions. People tell me that after four or five questions, I can't even remember what the problem was. So uh, it's just fun and it makes people laugh about their problems um, and it, it just changes changes the, the, the nature of the problem, it changes the story around the problem and then you're free to solve it. It's still, still, uh, still something you need to take action on but there's no problem anymore so you don't feel stuck anymore and that's, that's the way it works. Um, so have a look at the, the website, there's a free version online uh, and, and get the app if you're lucky enough to have Android. If you're unlucky enough to have an iPhone, there is, um, there's no iPhone app, but there's a mobile version on the website that will just, uh, on your iPhone screen, look exactly like the app, exactly the same simple layout. So have fun with that. I'll speak to you soon.
Yeah. I'm just going to give them one more minute to uh, finish off playing with the unsticker and then we'll wrap up. And Thank you very much for watching. If I don't get a chance to talk to you later on, then I really appreciate you watching on Facebook or maybe you're watching uh, the video later on. If you've enjoyed it, any questions, uh, then I have no idea how you ask questions. I guess you can reply to the video or send them to Dajwa uh, Prospects uh, Lebanon. They're doing a wonderful job of hosting the training so far. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So what, what did you find? Did, did you did you see a change? Yes. yes. What what kind of change did you see? What what, what does that look like? Do they smile? Do they laugh? Happy? Did you see their shoulders lift? They sit up differently or something like this? It's very simple. Yeah. You had a question. Spiral. Oh, left, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if some of the questions. No, like, you know when you take water out of, you let the water out of your bathroom sink at home, you brush it, you have a wash and you let the water go this way, or the water goes down this way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's your job. So what happens, it's very simple. If you are thinking of a good question to ask, so if, you, if, you, if your friend or your colleague or your client, so if your friend or your colleague or your client is telling you about a problem, and you are asking questions about the problem. Well, what happened? What did he say? And then what did you do? I tell you what you should do. They give you advice. And what do you do when somebody gives you advice about a problem? Just, Thank you. You don't understand. I tried that. Nothing works. Right. Because you're asking questions that are inside the problem that will not change it. Creative problem solving is about asking questions that are outside of the problem. So for you to make sense of the question, for you to even hear the question, you have to change how you think about the problem. Changing how you think about the problem then means you can solve it. So what the unsticker does, because of the randomness of the questions and because of the way the questions are written, it forces the problem to change. And the nice thing with the unsticker is if you've got a friend or a colleague who's stuck, they don't even have to answer you. The questions will have an effect when they hear them. They don't even have to answer. And if they do, you know, they can laugh. It's fun. Sometimes when we feel stuck, it feels horrible, we don't know what to do. Just to laugh about it is a good thing. So this evening, we talked about how to, what was it, how to get more out of life. And I introduced the idea that we live in a closed system. We can only get more out if we're prepared to put more in. And I've given you some tips this evening. I've given you some tips for setting goals, for creating value in your time. Even tips for taking a day off. While you're in the office, getting paid for it. Um, tips for how to negotiate with your boss and so on. But, you know, as with all good advice in life or all the wonderful knowledge that you've got through the course of your life, the valuable knowledge, it's only valuable if you do something with it. And you only get more out of life if you create more. And I've given you some ways that you can create more. Create more time. Create more space for yourself. Create more value in yourself. And when you create more value in yourself, other people see that. They want to give you something of equal value in return. So uh, I've given you some simple uh, practical tips about how to get more out of life. And as I said, what I really mean by that is things that you can use to create more in your life.
Because when you create more, you're not just touching your own life. You're affecting the lives of the people around you. You're creating more for them. And that's a wonderful thing to do. I think as a general philosophy, we should think to always leave people in a better place than we found them. I hope that's been true of this evening. Thank you very, very much for coming along. Thank you, Facebook. Bye-bye. Uh, it's been uh, great to work with you all. Wonderful to meet you all. Thank you so much. Uh, see you soon. Thank you.